We offer gratitude to our neighbors for their teachings and perspectives. Our path to this point has not always been graceful. There have been times where we've stumbled and had to find our footing again. As we move forward, we commit to learning and working together with respect to honor each other, the lands, and the river. Whether you are here in Clayton or at home tuning in, we encourage you to learn more about whose land you live and work on. And this website is a great place to start. Our executive director, John Peach, can't be here with us today, um, but he would like to extend his warm welcome to all of you. He likes to call this next bit the state of the river, and it's an update on the multitude of programs and campaigns that we are currently running. There are seven of us on staff. I'll, maybe they'll wave at you. Um, John is not here, of course. Bridget is over here. Uh, Karen was out at the check-in desk. Chelsea is hanging out over at this table. Linda couldn't be with us today. And Dan, our new educator, I'm not sure where he's hiding, but he's also here. And then me. We have 16 board members and many, many dedicated volunteers. We like to keep ourselves busy. So let's start with the big picture. Um, there's less ice coverage, warmer water, more frequent, more hazardous storms, record highs in global temperatures, all prove that the impact of climate change is everywhere, and the Great Lakes and the St. Lawrence River are no exception. We're currently working to build climate curriculum into our education programs and to encourage the next generations of advocates and stewards into action. We partner with other agencies and organizations to address coastal resiliency and water quality now. As the Upper St. Lawrence River Keeper, we are keenly aware that 20% of the world's fresh water sits in the Great Lakes watershed. And that water is a precious resource, particularly looking forward into the future. Save the River continues its support of the Great Lakes Compact, holding member states and provinces accountable to protect the waters and di from diversions outside of the watershed. We're actively working with other water keepers Save the River is one of three American Great Lakes keepers currently collecting data on PFAS and other emerging contaminants. We live in a world where society willingly pollutes its own drinking water, and that's a problem. Every surface water test we've conducted so far on the St. Lawrence has had multiple hits from the PFAS suite of chemicals. Right now, we're starting our third year of testing. If you would like to learn more about the program, I keep forgetting to switch the slide. Um, if you would like to learn more about the program, you can check out our most recent edition of the Riverwatch newsletter. We've also partnered with Data Source Canada to publish our testing results online. And we're working with other Great Lakes water keepers to find funding to fund watershed-wide testing going forward. We continue to advocate for the control and remediation of PFAS pollution and push for elimination of production and the use of these toxic substances. Great Lakes wide. Oh, and we've got a couple speakers who are going to talk to you more about emerging contaminants. So that's very exciting coming up. <clears throat> Great Lakes wide, invasive species continue to be a threat for the health of the watershed. Ships traveling inside or through the system do not have sufficient ballast water regulations, leading to the spread of aquatic invasive species from port to port within the Great Lakes. Uh, we continue to advocate for stronger regulations, particularly concerning ballast water. In New York State, we've been advocating for a ban of non-encapsulated polystyrene in floating docks. Local dock builders are supportive of this, this effort, and that's how we get things done from the ground up. The proposed legislation has been carried forward to Albany by Senator Mark Walzik and is currently in committee. We're working with Hudson Riverkeeper to identify an assembly member to move the legislation forward in the assembly as well. The process is slow, it is Albany, but we are optimistic. Plastics, once a cure-all, are now a very real problem. Research continues to prove that humans and animals are ingesting and inhaling micro and nanoplastics. Save the River supports the plastic reduction and recycling infrastructure legislation, working with Beyond Plastics and other advocates for collective action and corporate accountability. We also encourage, hmm? ooh, ooh, too far, too far. <laughs> we encourage local action. So this was a great year for our Trash Free River initiative, which Chelsea heads up. Save the River's crew of about 270 volunteers hauled 5,270 pounds of debris from the river's shorelines from Wilson's Bay down near Cape Vincent all the way up to Ogdensburg. This year, we also partnered with the Great River Cleanup, the Thousand mm -hmm. Islands Association, and Alexandria Bay Ch Chamber of Commerce, allowing us to have larger cooperative impact across the Saint Upper St. Lawrence. 
Thank you to our volunteers particularly and to our sponsors who help make these events possible. The Leonard C. and Mildred F. Ferguson Foundation, Labatt's, Delta Sonic, National Grid, Pfizer, Community Bank, and the Northern New York Community Foundation. Thank you to all of them. Right here on the river, we've had a productive year. We worked with our neighbors, with customs and government officials to find a solution to resolve concerns about excessive lighting at the new Wellesley Island facility. While recognizing the need for illumination for the safety of officers while they work, the lights were poorly angled, excessive, and trespassed into surrounding wetlands and houses, impacting wildlife and people. Glare on the river also caused safety concerns for nighttime boaters, but thanks to our collective efforts, the lights were realigned late last year. You can actually see that between the difference of these two photos over here. I figured out the laser pointer now too. <laughs> Common Turns benefited from a slew of upgrades this past season. Navigation Cell 180 had a complete overhaul, a new platform was built for Tid Shoal, and Navigation Cells 209 and 213 have new turn condos. 180 was in need of a new wooden sectioning and several boatloads of pea gravel. Jim McGarry, one of our long-term volunteers, uh, created the building plan, and the team assembled at Kring Point State Park to load everything that was needed. Dr. Lee Harper's work boat was essential because it had a crane to help us lift that pea gravel, as well as the parks crew because they helped us load everything in. We recruited some younger muscle from TI High School also to help us rake out all that gravel because it was like 16 barrels, it was a lot. Um, Tid Shoal has been a challenge for the past few years with mink, gulls, and expanding cormorant colonies. We think that we've got a solution to reclaim the shoal for the turns. There's a platform, thank you to Elaine. I didn't see her yet, but if she's here, thank you. Um, that will be installed in the spring with collaboration with Tilt. Um, and the, the aluminum legs on that platform make it hard for the mink to get up to the nesting surface. And then there's an exclusion grid on the top so that cormorants and gulls can't dive down in. Mm -hmm. 209, oop, went too far. 209 and 213 were blessed by an Eagle Scout and the Student Conservation Association. Ethan Waterman, who's hanging out back there, you can wave at everybody, um, constructed 50 new shelters, significantly improving the conditions from the 20-year-old A-frames that we had. The new shelters have interior baffles so that when things like great horned owls show up, um, they can't reach under and grab the chicks as easily. Ethan and the SCA crew placed the trails, no, SCA trails crew, place the shelters out on the cells in the fall and the new turns will be very appreciative of their new digs in the spring when they arrive back. Beach Watch is a successful monitoring program. We added a new site at Sawmill Bay this past year. There were reports of significant pollution entering the watershed from Wheeler Creek. Thank you to our dedicated volunteers that make this program possible. Dan Troop, Andrea Becker, Ron and Jean Daly, John and Kate Johnson and their kids, Brian LeJewitt and the whole Cape Vincent crew. We've also uh, got a new program coming up that we're really excited to announce, which is the Tributary Testing Program. It's funded by the Ferguson Foundation, and it expands Beach Watch to about half a dozen tributaries from Cape Vincent all the way up to Ogdensburg. Volunteers help us to place uh, shoal markers, place and remove shoal markers. We receive significant support from TIA, thank you. They donate markers and they created a shoal marking chart to help us track markers that drift off during the season. We would also like to acknowledge donations from Rhinemans, Garlocks, and Northern Marine with the invaluable help of On the River Construction too. They do the heavy lifting and we very much appreciate it. Okay, now we get to my favorite part. Nearest to my heart, education had a great year. We reached about 1,750 people through our programs. Floating Classroom, you might remember we launched last year at WEC, got youth out on the water to run water quality tests, learn about invasive species, um, find out about fish at the Thousand Islands Biological Station, and even drive the submersible ROV that the Coast Guard brought with them today. So you can also check it out. Um, many thanks to everybody who helped get that program out on the water. We think it made a really big impact with the youth and we're looking forward to continuing the program. 42 folks joined us for Riverkeeper programs at the Minna Anthony Common Nature Center this summer. Thank you to the Wellesley Island Parks crew for partnering with us to make this program accessible. We had so many, probably half of the people that went out with us were first time paddlers and uh, the other half were river enthusiasts. So it was wonderful to get them out on the water. 
Our intern, Emma French, prepared a short video for you. Chelsea's waving at me, so uh, we'll show that to you later. <clears throat> but we'll show that to you this afternoon. It's about the education highlights. And finally, we work closely with many coalitions and many partnerships to achieve our mission. Thank you to all of our members. Thank you to our sponsors. Thank you to our partners for your support and your help. With our staff, the board, our volunteers, we're making progress to help preserve, protect, and restore the Upper St. Lawrence River through advocacy, education, research, and stewardship.